Hey there, and welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. If you're listening to this episode while enjoying a cup of coffee, well, we're about to talk about what you might be ready to do by the time we say goodbye. Coffee often does more than just jumpstart your day, after all. It can also make you poop, a truth you've no doubt seen spelled out in a meme or on the side of an oh-so-clever coffee mug. But have you ever wondered why that happens? We did, which is why we asked gastroenterologist Christine Lee to join us. Dr. Lee is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic who pop into our weekly podcast to help us learn more about our health and our bodies. So let's get started on today's topic before that coffee fully kicks in. Dr. Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. Always love talking with you. Thanks for having me. Well, I got to say, it seems like whenever we talk, I I always feel bad because we always seem to uh, end up talking about poop. Um, <laughs> um, I guess it's, it's part of your job, I guess. It is part of my job. It's an important aspect of my job. Um, a lot of people have reservations about talking on certain topics. Uh, however, it does affect their life a great deal. So it's nice to have a forum where we can kind of get the information out and let them know it is okay to talk about things that are troubling them or bothering them in some way. Well, and that is why we're here today and, and why we have the podcast. We love to uh, talk about uh, subjects that, that I guess, involve everybody. Um, so that kind of brings us to today's thing, which is uh, drinking coffee and pooping. So um, why are these two things linked? Uh, there's actually a, a good scientific reason why those two are linked. Um, caffeine, uh, coffee, uh, as you know, uh, has caffeine. And caffeine tends to stimulate our body system where uh, it not only stimulates our concentration and our focus, but it also stimulates um, our muscle contractions and circulation and motility in our body. So uh, caffeine acting as a stimulant, it does stimulate our motility, our gut uh, functions, and therefore it does positively impact uh, GI motility, hence facilitating bowel movement. Okay. Now, is there anything else that, that, that's in coffee? Because I thought I read that even um, decaf coffee can have uh, the same effect. So you don't have to have just the high octane stuff to uh, kind of get that uh, sensation. Certainly. So most coffee has uh, comp- uh, components within the coffee that uh, in particular called furan, it stimulates a hormone called gastrin to be released from the stomach lining. And that also stimulates motility. So in addition to caffeine, the gastrin release that is stimulated by the coffee itself. And as you mentioned correctly, even decaf re- uh, causes this gastrin release. Now they have done studies. The decaf has a dampened response. It's not as robust as the full uh, caffeinated coffee, but nonetheless, it does stimulate gastrin release. And gastrin is a hormone that stimulates gut motility and uh, adding to it the bowel movement or uh, gastric function or GI motility function. Okay. And, and just for people who, who don't, we're, we're talking about motility here. Um, like there are muscles that are all throughout your kind of your colon, right? Can you kind of tell us like what's happening there when we're talking about the, these kind of contractions and, and what's going on? So uh, you're absolutely right. The intestinal tract is a, a closed circuit from mouth to anus. It's kind of like a unique plumbing, if you will, uh, with only two openings. And motil- it, it, unlike the plumbing, instead of being made out of uh, copper or metal of some sort made out of muscles and those muscles uh, contract and so the, the one part has to contract the next part has to release then you have to contract and release it's kind of like squeezing a tube of toothpaste okay <laughs> that, that, that's a great way to describe it <laughs> so the the muscles there just keep working and just keep kind of uh, you just pushing everything along until until you get an exit Correct, because it's it's a very long circuit. It's not a short length. Uh, from mouth to anus, the the um, the length that it has to travel is quite long. The contractions have to be coordinated as well. As you can see, if you know both ends contract at the same time, 
you don't have a net movement forward. So they have to be in communication. It needs to be a coordinated uh, effort where one contracts, one rela relaxes, and then one contracts, and then the second part relaxes. So it's a coordinated movement, almost like watching a wave in the ocean come in. Uh, it, it's a it's a coordinated uh, effort. And, and just so so this just kind of involuntarily happens. Um, how fast do you kind of get that effect after you uh, have some coffee? So that varies widely from person to person. So it, not all plumbing, as you know, is the same size. So some pa patients' uh, intestines may be wider and longer than others. So that kind of brings you back to physics 101. You know, if you have a skinny, long straw, it and you're trying to, you know, suck that milkshake, thick milkshake, it's going to take a longer time than if you had a, a wide, uh, short straw, then you can swarp up that thick milkshake rather quickly. So uh, a lot of different components play a role in the speed. So it will vary widely from patient to patient, depending on the length, the diameter of the intestines, and the route, whether you're more of a straight intestine person versus some patients, whether it's due to surgeries that they have had or uh, how they were born, altered anatomy, some patients tend to have more tortuous or redundant intestines and others being more straightforward. How fast can that come in? I mean, I, I saw, I think in somewhere, it might be as, as little as, as four minutes from having coffee to where you feel the urge to go. Right. I, I get that asked quite often. And that really also depends on what you have stored and ready to go in your colon. So when you drink coffee, uh, there is no way that the coffee reaches your colon in that short period of time. However, if your colon is loaded, ready to go fire at any moment, um, and all you needed is that one extra stimulation, then you can fire within minutes. But before you even finish that cup of coffee, you're in the bathroom seeing the results. Just However, that little extra push. <laughs> that's exactly right. However, if your colon is pretty emptied out, meaning you had nothing stored and nothing ready to fire, and you can drink that coffee, you're really not going to have much of an effect. Right. Does the effect diminish over time or if you, I mean, just consume a lot of coffee? And I ask this, that as somebody who goes through about a pot a day. So, yes, yeah, so like all things in life, um, you know, if we if you and I went for a walk every day for two miles at the end of the two mile, we might be a little fatigued and tired and sweaty. Uh, if we did it for a long time, we might not even bat an eye, you know, we might have to do 10 miles before we break out of sweat. So there is some component of tolerance, but it's also the situation, how much uh, stool you had ready to fire in your colon will have the biggest effect on how soon you have a result from a cup of coffee. All right. Let, let's look at like, does it matter if you put different things in your coffee? Like I always drink my coffee black, no sugar, no, no anything in it. Um, if you put dairy in it, would that impact things or, or make you more likely to, to feel the urge to go? Yes, absolutely. Um, dear, most folks develop some degree of lactose intolerance uh, and obviously having creamer or dairy will add to that effect as well as added sugars and fats. Um, and all of those can affect your intestinal tract and your colon transit time, uh, depending on how much creamer you put in and how sensitive you are to the dairy or lactose. Uh, let me ask you this too, because we had mentioned caffeine uh, just a little bit ago. It is, is it all caffeinated drinks or, or does coffee have something just kind of special to it that really does that? Coffee has something special to it because one, it's the timing. Uh, most, pay, most people drink coffee in the morning and in the morning is where most people have the most heightened gastrocolic reflex and it's most pronounced in the morning. So your intestinal tract is more light sensitive or prone to movement in the morning, and that's called gastrocolic reflex. So when you drink your cup of coffee in the morning, uh, it just happens that it's potentiating that gastrocolic reflex. Additionally, 
most coffee drinkers that I know don't really care for stale coffee. They like a hot, fresh pot of coffee. And it tends to be warm. And anything warm causes vasodilation, smooth muscle relaxation. It's kind of soothing. So all the muscles relax and therefore decreases the resistance increasing or facilitating the transit time. Are there certain people, like if you have certain conditions or just uh, certain people in general that might be more prone to, uh, I guess, make a, make a quicker trip to the restroom after a cup of coffee? <laughs> so some patients, whether it's genetic or through, uh, throughout their life, can get more sensitized to hormones or neurotransmitters. And so if you're uh, more sensitive to medications or drugs, even caffeine, uh, then you'll be more prone to have this kind of uh, reaction or result occur from coffee. Uh, some patients have decreased sensitivity to hormonal effects of gastrin or hormonal effects of gastrocolic reflux, and those the patients may see lesser or no effect of coffee. Okay. And if you're somebody who already is maybe a little sensitive down there, like you have uh, irritable bowel syndrome or something like that, I take it you might even feel it a little bit more? So if you have irritable bowel syndrome, that they tend to have more, or, or they theorize they have more sensitivity to those influences, environmental influences, and therefore it would affect uh, things like coffee or caffeine uh, would affect uh, those patients uh, to a bigger amount. Bigger amount. Uh, when we were talking earlier, uh, you had mentioned that you get this question a lot in the office. People come in and they're kind of uh, kind of curious as to whether or not, uh, I guess, what they're thinking they feel is really what's happening. Um, what do you tell them to try to put their mind at ease? Well, so every patient, once they kind of realize what their reaction is, how big of a reaction or how soon of a reaction, they can be uh, planning ahead of time, meaning... Uh, if you know that this happens, you can plan for it and use it to your advantage. So in the morning, uh, I always tell patients having a bowel wound or defecation is kind of like taking the trash out. You really do want to do it on a daily uh, basis and you really want to do a good job. You want to get all of it out. So uh, if you tend to have difficulty uh, making that happen, you might want to take advantage of these characteristics or uh, of the gastrocolic reflux being in the morning, uh, the warm cup of coffee in the morning. And then, you know, whether you want to kind of potentiate that by having a brand cereal or oatmeal um, to just kind of potentiate each other so you can get the job done uh, at a higher quality and more uh, regular consistency, you can always use that to your advantage. Well, consistency is always a good thing. Um, we've uh, we've covered a lot here. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, so the biggest thing is to kind of learn what your reaction is and, and really to, to use it to your advantage. It's not necessarily a bad thing. And, and as we get older, our the quality of our bowel movements goes down because the, our metabolism slows down with age. And therefore, the motility slows down with age. And with aging, a lot of us start losing some muscle called sarcopenia. In fact, as literature shows, starting at age 30s, we start losing 1% of our body mass per year. And therefore, uh, the quality of bowel movements decreases with age. So it's not a matter of, did you go to the bathroom? It's how well did you go to the bathroom? Uh, some patients oftentimes see me because they had a bowel movement but they have this pressure, uh, sense of incomplete evacuation. So those are the folks that um, are trying to go, but they don't get everything out. And so those are the folks that could really take advantage of this uh, reaction with the coffee, warm cup of coffee in the morning with bran cereal or oatmeal uh, so that you can eliminate uh, better. And if you leave less stool behind in your colon, you'll have less abdominal bloating, gas, cramping, discomfort, or unexpected accidents even. Well, well, not that I needed another excuse to have coffee in the morning, but um, uh, you know, you sold me on it. So, <laughs> um, so thank you so much for being here today and uh, looking forward to having you back, Dr. Lee. Thank you so much for the opportunity. 
So now you know why drinking that coffee often leads to a restroom run. Use that information wisely, especially if you've got a lengthy meeting or a long drive following that cup of joe. Till next time, be well.